Han Solo might be a little rough around the edges, but he's a good guy deep down, right? Well, this video may leave you reconsidering that opinion. When we meet him, Han immediately shoots Greedo in cold blood, so that automatically puts him on the wrong side of the wall. This is because Han was smuggling drugs for Jabba the Hutt, which is also a major crime. Big no-no, Han. Then, Han meets Luke and Obi-Wan, who are being hunted by the Empire. Han quickly agrees to provide them transport for the right price. That's harboring fugitives. Han's a businessman, though. He always pulls through for his customers, so why not blow away three stormtroopers in the Mos Eisley spaceport? In addition to the murder charges, Han would also get an obstruction of justice charge, because he was preventing the stormtroopers from reaching Luke and Obi-Wan. By the way, I'm going to keep a running count of the fines and charges, and at the end of the video, I'll list everything all at once, so be sure to stick around for that. Anyway, just as they're about to escape, three Star Destroyers almost catch up with the Falcon. This was GTA, Han went from two stars to five stars really fast. Luckily, Han makes the jump to hyperspace at the last second, but this counts as evading and resisting arrest, an offense which often receives one year in jail plus a $3,000 fine in many developed systems. I guess Han managed to reach 10 stars or something, because then he gets caught by the Death Star. He wisely decides to sneak out into the Death Star itself, earning him a hefty trespassing charge. Since the Death Star is a super top secret military base, I think it's comparable to Area 51 in the United States. People that sneak into Area 51 are shot on sight. So this is a death sentence, Han. I forgot, never tell him the odds. Even Han understood that he couldn't just casually walk around the Death Star though, so why not take some stormtrooper suits as a disguise? No, not from the armory. I mean assault and knock out two stormtroopers and take their clothes off them. Yeah, that one makes more sense for sure. Not that bad compared to what you've been doing though. This is a reformed Han Solo. Wait. <laughs> Never mind, Han's back to his old ways. He just killed three prison guards with impunity. Just like Moss Eisley, this is another aggravated capital felony. Then right after that, he quickly shoots out the security cameras and smashes the Imperial comm station, which counts as vandalism of government property valued at between $1,000 and $10,000. I'm starting to wonder how this hardened criminal married a princess. Then again, Leia fell in love with her brother and a convict at the same time. She must have been colorblind, because those red flags sure looked green to her. Just as she's being freed, the authorities arrive. Once again, Han resorts to violence. Remember kids, shooting your blaster at first sight is not the answer. After they get out of the trash compactor, Han decides to take his anger out on the stormtroopers, and he chases an entire squad down a corridor. Sorry Han, but that constitutes as assault against an officer. Stormtroopers are just snowflakes these days. As if that wasn't enough, Han decided to shoot two troopers in the chest too, so we'll have to add a double murder to that, which is yet another aggravated capital felony as he's in the act of committing a few other crimes. Han got really lucky. He got more than he bargained for when he took the job of helping Obi-Wan and Luke. But now, he's done. Han saved the princess. He'll just relax and take it easy for a bit now, right? Nope. By returning Leia to the Alliance and being privy to their plan to attack the Death Star, Han just got into a whole new world trouble. Han could be charged with treason, conspiracy and sedition, a premeditated act of terrorism for actually attacking the Death Star, and he could get lumped into a RICO charge, since he's a part of an organized crime ring, at least how the Empire sees it. By this point, Han's already racked up a life's worth of sentences, not to mention the insane fines. So he just said screw it, and actually went and helped the Alliance destroy the Death Star. Han takes out two of Vader's wingmen and hits Vader, which saves Luke. But this is where it gets really wild. Luke blows up the Death Star, killing approximately 2 million people. That makes Han an accomplice to mass murder, destruction of government property, and terrorism. There's no adequate charge for this crime. By letter of law, Han probably deserves a thousand years in prison. I don't even want to think about what Luke would get charged with, but that's a question for another video. After all of that, it makes sense that Han would double down and join the rebellion. At this point, his best chance at having his criminal record wiped is just to destroy the Empire. So he joins the rebels at Ha. Unfortunately for Han, Empire finds them really quickly. Thanks to Admiral Ossel though, Han has just time to barely escape, but not before he guns down two snowtroopers with the Falcon's guns, which is another double count of vehicular homicide. The new Admiral in command pursues Han into an asteroid field, sending TIE fighters out to chase. This is a textbook case of evading police. And for the first time in a long time, Han manages to lay low for a while. He makes it to Bespin to visit Lando, and all is good in life. And then all of a sudden, Han walks into a room expecting dinner, and instead he gets Darth Vader at the head of the table. No food. How disappointing. Han decides to take his anger out on Vader by shooting a few blaster shots at him, before Vader disarms Han in self-defense. What were you thinking, Han? You'd already attempted murder on him at the Death Star, and now this? I guess he was just hangry or something. But in a stroke of good luck, Vader decides not to execute Han, even though it's clear from his past crimes that if anyone deserved it, Han did. Instead, Han is frozen in carbonite and sent to Jabba the Hutt. In essence, this voids all of Han's crimes against the Empire. 
since Vader chose not to directly sentence or punish Han. So in Return of the Jedi, Han has a clean slate. Unfortunately, he's frozen in carbonite, but the moment he gets rescued, Han is right back at it committing crimes. Still blind from the carbonite stasis, Han picks up a staff that one of Jabba's guards had dropped. Not knowing what he was doing, he spins around, hitting Boba's jetpack with the staff, which sends Boba down into the Sarlacc pit. And this is a clear-cut case of gross negligence. Sorry, Han, but you can't be picking up weapons when you're half blind. That's just not smart, bud. Once Han is back in his right mind, he decides to return the Alliance and start planning more crimes. This time, he's the leader of a plot to destroy the Empire shield generator on Endor. The plot also lands Han with trespassing on government property and breaking and entering charges. Thankfully, the authorities manage to capture Han and his team before they do any real damage. Until the Ewoks come to the rescue, an all-out melee ensues, and even without a blaster, Han still manages to acquire two assault charges. One for throwing this guy, and another for flipping this poor dude. That's better than these next two stormtroopers, though. As soon as Han gets his blaster back, he promptly shoots two troopers in the chest, instantly killing them. With the police dealt with, Han completes his mission, detonating the explosives and destroying the shield generator. That also makes him accomplice to the destruction of the second Death Star. But at this point, none of that matters. Han's slate is wiped clean. Wow. He finally marries Leia, starts a family, and becomes a galactic hero and a public figure. Maybe crime does get you places. So escape the Matrix, commit crimes, stay hard. Video over. Wait a second, I'm forgetting something. This man has an entire movie about himself. And would you look at that? The first scene in the movie and he's running from the authorities. So this is where he got it from. Oh wait, he stole a speeder too. So that's Grand Theft Speeder, I guess. He's also stolen a small vial of coaxium, which probably constitutes petty theft. All of that in the first minute of the movie. It wouldn't be a movie about Han if he wasn't part of some cartel, right? But Han got scared straight and decided to go into the Imperial military. Yeah, not a good idea, Han. It took him about three years to figure that out, though. He's a little slow, not gonna lie. Being slow like he is, he then decides his next best option is to desert the army. And desertion is a crime punishable by court-martial and execution on Earth. But the Empire decides to just throw him in a pit with a Wookiee. I think I like our way better. Electric chair, firing squad, or a Wookiee pulling the limbs from my body? You decide down below. Somehow, Han kind of rizzed up Chewbacca with his sensual yelling, and they escape by collapsing the pit, killing two stormtroopers. Before you say I'm crazy, they literally shower together a few scenes later. I'm just saying. But they escaped by joining Beckett's crew and stealing a ship. So that's conspiracy and Grand Theft Starship, or whatever you want to call it. Turns out the crew has an awesome plan. They said, take it back now y'all, because they want to do a train heist. It was a crime in the Wild West, and it's definitely still a crime. But this next part is where it gets really interesting though. Han pretends to be a slave so he can sneak into the Pikes mining facility. This is actually fraud by impersonation. I'm just surprised that the Pikes didn't see right through this. Han is clearly not slave material. He's white. And the Pikes pay for that mistake big time. Call him Abe Lincoln, cause Han freed all the slaves. Unfortunately, he sabotages the Pikes system, destroys a lot of their facility, and helps Chewie and the slaves kill a ton of guards. Han even shoots a few himself for good measure. And now we see where Han got his 5 star GTA experience. They really devoted an entire Star Destroyer for this man before they even knew who he was. Respect. Han still hasn't learned good business practices yet though. He tries to give Dryden Voss fake coaxium. That's also for all bro. And because he conspired with Infos Nest to refine the coaxium and create the fakes, that's gonna be a Rico charge. And then to wrap up everything, Han murders his boss. If Han can afford a good lawyer though, this can probably just be self-defense. I guess that's kinda what he did with Leia, right? Just date a senator and all your problems go away. Unless you're Anakin, I guess.